But anyways, the beginning was that my father needed the tool. I ended up building something. But then other farmers saw this tool as well and said, hey, they would like to start using it. And that was when it clicked that it could grow into a business. Bonjour, bonjour, and welcome to Mission First, the podcast to learn from successful entrepreneurs changing the world for the better. In today's mini-series, my guest is Robin Sadwax, CEO of eAgronome, the company fighting climate change by supporting sustainable farming. The best companies are often started by turning a personal problem into a business. In this second episode of this series, you will learn how Robin built from the ground up not just one, but two businesses inspired by personal obstacles he has faced. Before this experience, you had a family agriculture business, but before you started this project, eAgronome, you also had your own company during, I think, 10 years, I read on LinkedIn, that you also exited. So you wanted to talk about how you've turned your personal problems into a business. So I'm really curious to hear what you can share from these two stories, starting first with Three Little Piglets, Science Show Company. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. I was... I was in high school and obviously coming from the farming family and coming from entrepreneurial family, I was interested in business, but my focus was football. That was my dream. I wanted to start playing in Manchester United or any other of those big clubs. That was the focus. And then in high school, all of the students in Estonia have to, uh, in the end of the high school or by the end of the high school, have to write a paper or do some research. But it was also possible to do a student company as an alternative. And we, with some other classmates, thought that, hey, building a company would be a much more fun experience. And then we started discussing, and somehow the discussions went to the place that, hey, we see the children, if they are in the kindergarten, then they really want to go to school. But then when they are already in school, then they are not interested in the school anymore. And we thought how to bring this excitement back to learning and decided doing science shows so that we show some magical trick to children and then they would ask questions from us. Why did it happen? And what's the science behind this? And uh, develop an interest in learning. And at first we started in birthdays and then later we started doing the same kind of shows in the kindergarten classes. And today there are thousands of children, six-year-old children going to class every week or every second week. And then every year, hundreds of children are inviting us to their birthdays as well. And that's really exciting because we see, well, birthday is the most important day of a year for the children. And now they are inviting us to teach them something during this day. So we have made studying and science quite exciting for them. And for me, it showed the beauty of building a business. And for me, the beauty was that if, if you saw some kind of problem in a world, you see that you want to fix something, then there are many ways to fix it. But one of the ways that I personally like a lot is building a business around this problem or, or around this challenge. In a nutshell, what was the business model of this one and how big was the company when you sold it and when you left it? Well, initially, with the science shows during birthdays, uh, people were paying us, but then we hired a lot of uh, students. We actually sold the company, I can tell about this as well, but we have, probably still have around 50 people, students, doing those science shows. So it's really cool to give it the first work experience as well and something to write to their CVs and uh, take the first steps in the job market. And then we had parents, instead of inviting a clown or some other performer to the birthday party, they invited us to do this science show. And then with those kindergarten classes, we have the monthly recurring fee, something that they paid. And then later years, and that's still going on, we started doing like a science boxes. So something that children can do in the home on their own. And that was really nice because um, that didn't involve that much labor from our end anymore. And it was much more scalable. Uh, and the company who bought this, obviously, it wasn't a like, big exit or anything, but still uh, nice to see that the company is still up and running. The company who bought this is doing one science television show in Estonia. And it's really nice to see them taking this project forward now. 
That's really cool. Congratulations for starting a company so young and making it to the stage of selling it. I really love that idea because I studied science and chemistry and I ran into a similar problem on my side too. During my PhD, you get a grant in order to study. You do your research and in exchange, you have to do a certain amount of hours, teach a certain amount of hours to the students of the university. Or in that case for myself, I was involved into an exhibition that we were doing once a year, doing a month and welcoming twice a day. A full amphitheater full of students, you know, 16, 17, just before they were going to university. And it was called a science exhibition. And what we realized is we were teaching them in a very boring way. The old fashioned way of doing this, which was, okay, we mix these two components. Here is what happens. Here is the science behind it. Of course, a few would be super amazed and focused, but most of them would just drop. And so what we decided to do one time, we had an evening and we brainstormed, what could we do? At the time, there were this TV show, it's French, it's called The Experts, this TV show about the police department analyzing and then trying to solve murders and then using all the science behind it. And so we decided to say, okay, yeah, let's see if we can make a, a story about this. And then we turned all the experiments we wanted to have and brought them into a scenario, a storyboard, where we're studying where we were actually the policemen from this lab division, and that we were noticing the murders and were caught, and students like were super amazed by it. And the teachers told us, wow, this is so cool, like normally we have a hard time trying to keep the students, you know, not screaming or just talking the whole time, and now they are super entertained. Going back to your personal experience, can you explain us a bit how your personal experience and your personal problems helped you to develop the agronom. Yeah, so there I was, finished the high school, went to study computer science. Football was long forgotten, but I had this new love business because I knew that it's a good way to change things however you want. And well, that was one of the main reasons why I uh, actually sold the company to the next guys as well, because we couldn't focus on that anymore. I went to university and others, other guys went to study abroad and etc. So, so there I was studying computer science and as you mentioned, I'm coming from the farming family. So my father has 1,400 hectare organic grain farm in South Estonia. He had, I think, 10 Excel tables to manage the farm, like financial plan and then the crop plan and the task plan and then some reports for the governments and, and etc. And he was really looking for a tool, one tool that would help to remove all this need for Excel tables and that would be used to manage the farm. And I had to look into this. We didn't find anything good. And then uh, I ended up building something on my own for my father. I actually had slightly other ideas in my mind what to do, like what kind of businesses to build in the future. But then other farmers saw this tool as well and said, hey, they would like to start using it. So that's when it clicked. And that's when I started to look for a team because I was still like a first year computer science student. So I got some guys who were really experienced programmers already. And we started some other people as well. And we started e all together. And that was in 2016. From the first prototype, we had the humus balance calculator or the soil calculator involved. Not because of farmers wanted it, but it, because it was close to our parts. And then a few years ago or something like this, we launched the carbon program and really found a way how to work on our mission as well in helping farmers to become more sustainable. But anyways, the beginning was that my father needed the tool. I ended up building something. Other farmers needed this as well. And that was when it clicked that it could grow into a business. If you are busy and might not have the time to listen to all episodes of this podcast, just a little tip. Sign up for my newsletter on gtimpact.com. You will receive the summary of advice from each episode and you will get personal recommendations on which episode you should focus on depending on your current challenges, your industry and your startup stage. Have a nice day.